Coming up tonight in news. What the National Hurricane Coordinator has to say about the pace of power restoration on New Providence. Health officials reveal how much damage Matthew caused to public health facilities across the country. That story straight ahead. How Hurricane Matthew has impacted populations of the mosquito that spread the Zika virus. And budget food store on Bernard Road gutted by fire. Welcome to our news. I'm Dana Smith. Thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight as Bahamas Power and Light reports it has restored power to 80% of customers left in the dark after Hurricane Matthew. The National Hurricane Coordinator says he is not satisfied with the pace of restoration so far. This as he asked residents to be patient as teams work around the clock to bring services back up. Christina McNeil reports. National Hurricane Coordinator Shane Gibson says he appreciates some residents are still without power nearly two weeks after Hurricane Matthew, but their concerns are not lost on him. Listen, I'm a perfectionist. I'll never be satisfied. But what I'm saying is I, I, I recognize that they're working hard and I recognize also and I empathize with individuals who don't have electricity. And so uh, I, I, for me, to ever tell you I'm satisfied. That's very difficult to do. But he notes that BPL teams are working around the clock. New trucks to supplement BPL's fleet could be seen on New Providence today, working to reconnect those customers still without power. I, I feel that I'm a bit more understanding in terms of knowing that they can't give us everything we want. But what I'm confident with is that they're working and they're almost working around the clock. And they're utilizing every single team that they were able to access between Carolect, between Power Secure. Um, the private sector, retirees, and existing employees. Gibson says he gets daily updates on restoration from BPL, but each assessment takes time, especially in those areas impacted by severe flooding. In areas where you had serious flooding, then you have to have all of the, the houses rewired again. So they need to be rewired, inspected by um, a local electrician, and then inspected by the Ministry of Works, and then pass on to BEC to restore electricity. And so they've given us um, everything that we need, except they can't tell us based on everything that exists, give us timelines when our date will be on, when the balance of Sibirius will be on, when the balance of Ruru, because when they get there, they don't know they'll meet. Those residents impacted by severe flooding are advised to have their homes inspected by licensed electricians before having power restored to their homes. Reporting for our news, I'm Christina McNeil. Meanwhile, power restoration efforts continue on Grand Bahama. Nina Lang reports. Thousands of Grand Bahama residents are breathing a sigh of relief after regaining power at their homes following Hurricane Matthew. Some 4,000 Grand Bahama Power Company customers were reconnected just a week after the storm, with many residents commending the company for its speedy response. Considering the amount of damage we had, it was, it was a really you know, a good experience to have it back on a short space of time. I think it was only like a week. I felt like shouting. I was so happy when the power came on. I ran outside to look to see who else had power. Well, we start turning on all the lights and um, turn on the fan and, you know, plug in the fridge and start feeling the sense of normalcy again. It was a good feeling. But with thousands more still in the dark, GB Power Company President and CEO Sarah McDonald says the company has a daunting task ahead, made even more challenging by a delay in the shipment of some essential supplies. Our vehicles have been bumped back. So crews are arriving and the trucks haven't arrived, which is very frustrating for the guys who have shown up and want to go to work, and obviously frustrating for us because we were trying to build a work plan around it. McDonnell added that the company is also awaiting the shipment of new distribution poles and transmission poles. To offset this setback, McDonnell said the company will seek assistance from the business community. We're going to reach out to some other of the industrial customers and say, can we can we get a few trucks to get them out and maybe even remove, you know, some of the poles and, and do some of the work that it's not, you know, it's not quite as high level skills as they're, they're able to do, but at least it would get us started. The GB Power Company has enlisted the help of over 200 personnel from the U.S. and Canada to carry out repairs across the island. However, the power company boss said these unforeseen challenges have made it difficult to provide an estimated date for the island's full restoration. Reporting from Grand Bahama for our news, I'm Nina Lang. 
Well, nearly two weeks after Hurricane Matthew ravaged New Providence, Andros and Grand Bahama, Public Hospitals Authority Managing Director Herbert Brown says the monster storm caused more than a half a million dollars worth of damage to public health care facilities on those islands. Our Jasmine Brown has the breakdown in this report. Brown revealed that according to those assessments, nearly $800,000 in damage was caused by Hurricane Matthew. This is about $740,000. Um, and so we are seeking um, to solicit the funding to be able to uh, uh, deal with those damages. According to Brown, there was only minimal damage to Princess Margaret Hospital and Sandalin's Rehabilitation Center. However, he says the most extensively damaged public health care facilities were in Grand Bahama. Last week, the Rand Memorial Hospital had experienced power issues due to a malfunctioning generator. Brown says that has since been fixed. The city power at the Rand Memorial Hospital has been restored, so we now have full city power at the Ron Memorial Hospital. As for the clinic that was destroyed in West End, Grand Bahama, Brown says they have already identified another temporary location to house the clinic. It is to report that we would have identified another facility uh, and the services for West Grand Bahama will be restored by Monday of next week. In the interim, we have consolidated the services for West End Clinic and 8 Mile Rock together, so those persons from West End will come to the uh, 8 Mile Rock Clinic until uh, the clinic in West End is completed. Despite the ongoing challenges, he says it could have been much worse had they not taken precautionary measures before the storm hit. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Climate change in the Bahamas has never been more evident than in the aftermath of Hurricane Matthew. Environment Minister Kenrit Dorsett toured affected areas on New Providence yesterday, noting that erosion along some of the southern shores is already evident. Well, certainly from the naked eye, one can see that there has been erosion along our, our beaches. And so Ministry of Works teams are going to be in here to do comprehensive assessments. We've had a lot of damage along the southern coastline to the sea walls where they did exist. Um, and so we have to look at re-engineering all of those sea walls. I mean, climate change is real. Mm -hmm. And the reality is if we do not abate uh, uh, the warming of our oceans, if we don't address greenhouse gas emissions, these weather systems are only going to get more intense as the years go on. Dorset says the Parks Authority has already begun cleaning up impacted areas to return a sense of normalcy. They've begun work on Sanders, Goodmans Bay, and they're moving through systematically. Um, in the report, I didn't realize that we had so much seaweed uh, on the beach here at Adelaide, but we will retrieve it because we can obviously use that um, at the end of the day once we clean it up for landscaping and beautification. While Hurricane Matthew has caused millions of dollars worth of damage, public health officials say the monster storm may have had a major impact on the spread of the Zika virus. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Glenn Benneby says they have seen a significant decrease in the number of reported mosquito bites since the passage of Hurricane Matthew. I've also had a conversation with one of our senior physicians on this matter. And since the hurricane, it would appear that the number of persons, patients, uh, reporting mosquito bites are less. And so what we believe and we are thinking about is that the high winds during the uh, hurricane may have caused the adult mosquito to take flight or to be blown out of the area. He confirmed there have been no new reported cases of Zika in the Bahamas despite all the standing water after the storm. Benneby is appealing to residents to continue to keep their communities as clean as possible to avoid new cases. What we have observed is that communities continue to work together and are cleaning up after the hurricane. And although that was not the intent in terms of looking at Zika because of the response of the community to clean up and to uh, take receptacles away, containers away, we are benefiting from that. There are currently 17 confirmed cases of Zika in the Bahamas. Well, still to come on our news, a man arraigned for a June murder on New Providence. Firefighters rushed to the scene of a fire at a local food store. We have the details straight ahead.
And Princess Margaret Hospital's lab services accredited to international standards.